Hi everyone, welcome to Cheltenham Chart and Club. So much to talk about today. I'm going to be quite controversial about uh, the Benny Juju situation. I'm also going to say my piece on Gentleman's Game. And uh, then we'll talk about the racing from last week. And then finally we'll talk about the, the amount of uh, podcasts that are out there. The future plans with me and Gary for uh, Turning for Home, uh, which is Gary's channel. And uh, a couple of previews that I'm going to do uh, neither at Cheltenham. So, thanks very much for all the comments from last week. I think we just have to soldier on. It's uh, I'm still a bit sore after like so many, like three non-runners out of five bets is really really poor. But we just have to keep going and see how we get on. So, looking at the Benny Did You things, firstly, I I feel for racing's um, integrity. And I know that people will, will bash this view, but I honestly think that the HRI should have some sort of inquiry into the Benny situation. I think they should go to the yard, they should say, right, what went on last week? What happened when the vets came here? What what was the injury? How bad was it? And, and I mean, they know what a bad injury is like and what a bad injury isn't like. Is it a small injury? Was it really an injury where they could say, well, we still thought until Tuesday that she could run in a race at Cheltenham? Or really, should they be pulled up for not putting this information out in the public domain quicker? I mean, technology is so good now, I don't think they can use an excuse of not being able to get in touch with an owner or such like that. I mean, really, this is an important issue. And then if they do find out that this was a serious injury, then they should be looking at the Betfair records of who laid this horse. I feel that is a honest way to go about things. I think if they want to investigate some of the things they have investigated recently, I think that they have to be fair and honest. And um, it doesn't matter if it's a cha uh, champion trainer. I think they have to uh, investigate things with him just the same as they investigate other things with other smaller trainers. And I think it would uh, help the integrity of the sport. And it would also stop maybe this thing happening again um, with whatever yard want to do it and keep quiet about a, a horse who's injured. Now no one's saying that they have kept quiet but if, if it's investigated then other yards will know that it's going to happen to them if a horse gets injured and they may say well it's nothing to do with the betting public. Well it is plenty to do with the betting public. I mean at the end of the day it, if people don't bet on racing there won't be any racing so that's my thoughts on it anyway. On the gentleman's game thing, I think connections of a lot of horses are whooping at the fact that Mouse Morris has uh, taken this horse out of um, the Albert Bartlett. I absolutely, I cannot believe that a trainer still living in the 1990s has scratched a horse from a race like this. I mean, he would have been Probably the most likely winner. He's beaten the favourite on the second favourite on his previous outing. He's improving. And there is no excuse really because the five-year-old and the saving the horse thing is an absolute load of rubbish for me. Um, first of all, he went from a two-mile maiden win at Cork straight into a grade one. So if you're minding a horse, that doesn't seem like it's minding a lot. Especially when he took him out of the race at Thurless which was a stepping stone race like what Tory Groff took. And it seems very strange that there's a 50 grand bonus for going to the grade one at Leopardstown, which he wanted to go for, and then at Cheltenham. And then as soon as the race wasn't won, and the stable staff bonus was gone, that um, by the Monday the horse was out of uh, Cheltenham because it was going to overface him to go to Cheltenham. So for me, I think... Uh, Pretty similar to Jose Mourinho's uh, football tactics, uh, Mouse Morris's uh, race planning, ex just sort of like is in the 1990s. Alaho running this race as a five year old, he's favourite for the Ryanair after finishing third in an RSA last season. So it doesn't bottom horses out. The first four last season are all running fantastic races this season. Uh, I, I just don't, I just don't get it. But really. He's given up the opportunity of training a grade one winner. And, you know, when you're losing numbers in the, in the yard, numbers are dropping, people are less likely to put horses in your care, then you want to put your name in lights. Instead, he wants to put a horse in its box. 
and it can sit there while lesser horses win the Albert Bartler. So getting on to on the track now, um, five minutes in, on the track, what's happened? Um, All Mankind won not the best kingmaker. I mean, when you're beating Sky Pirate, who's a handicapper, then really it wasn't a high-class kingmaker. I think Dan Skelton's probably decided that he's going to win lesser pots while the Irish horses aren't in the races. And um, he's won nicely. I think he's very much third choice in the Arkle, and I don't see him winning the Arkle, although he'll run a half-decent race. On to Saturday, Goshen was just the wow factor. I think just, it wasn't the wow factor about the win, it was that he actually came back. Do I feel he's a 5-1 to one shot for the champion hurdle? I, I probably would say no, he's not. I perhaps don't think he is. Uh, should be that short, but because I think Kenny Sackle and Epitant could have done this to song for someone as well. I think he had all his conditions in his uh, favour. Right-handed, short chalk, flat, and I don't think it'll be quite as easy to dominate a champion hurdle field. But it was a good win. A couple of eye catchers at Haydock were champion platinum who stayed on in the second and looked every inch a plot for the per temps, don't think he'll go up in the weights either, so yeah, very promising performance. Although I've always thought a strong run three mile might catch him out. I remember Nicky Henderson's comments about this horse a couple of years ago, and he certainly appears to be one of those sort of horses that they're bringing back with a handicap in mind, and I think the per temps is probably that handicap. Lord de Manil did his uh, Grand National claims no harm. I would say if they missed the National Hunt Chase this year, that he'll go to the Grand National with a fighting chance. I wouldn't say he'd be a favourite or anything like that, but he'd go there with a decent chance, I would think. Nassau, um, I think, is a bastard flash for the Triumph Hurdle. Now, I thought he would beat uh, Mon Moral, but he, he didn't. And, um, yeah, I thought Mon Moral did well, actually. He ran a nice race, and maybe he's put himself into the picture to actually have a go at the Triumph. But they have said... Entry and maybe I think we'd probably be better off waiting for entry. And that was uh, most of Saturday's um, eye catchers for me. I asked got I was disappointed with Gally Hill. I thought he'd win that race. Perhaps put himself in the Ballymore picture. I think he's basically if he runs in the Ballymore, he'll be pretty much a bit part player. Today at Navin, Coco Beach was a little bit fortunate in that the, his opponent made two bad mistakes, Esperito Bello, and I don't know if that performance would have been a Cheltenham winning performance, but he's been ruled out since the race took place, so he won't be going to Cheltenham Cocoa Beach. I was disappointed with Fury Road a little bit to not hold on when he had the lead and to be almost outstayed over two mile four and a half by Beacon Edge although you know another half mile maybe he'll uh, reverse that form but Beacon Edge is no back number I think he just ran poorly lost him out and perhaps he's a stairs hurdle outsider I saw Angel's Dawn run a decent race um, to be second just before I started to make the video and um, that augurs well for a horse who I've been looking at a lot lately in Tory Graph. Well, since Gentleman's Game was taken out the Albert Bartlett. I do see um, this horse as perhaps, Tory Graph, as perhaps a Martin Pipe horse. Because he's got a 1-4-1 mark in Britain, which, you know, would get him in the Martin Pipe. He's a strong stayer. Um, Elliot has put that sort of horse into the... Martin Pike before but then again he could be up to the Albert Bartlett task and I, I have looked at him a few times in the any race market 12 to 1 as a potential bet so yeah he was one of the potential bets I looked at um, I'll say that I've put a few quid each way on uh, Shattered Love and um, thankfully I got that bet off before Benny Dudu was taken out so yeah, I'm just telling you my potential bets because I don't think I'll have any bets until very close to the Cheltenham Festival now because I really can't risk any more non-runners with three out of five bets not running. I really need to get some actually to the track. I'm very interested later 
in the afternoon to see how Ginto runs. I really feel that he could be a huge rival from Gordon Elliott's yard, but um, he, he really let them down last first time out. Uh, but I can see if he produces a decent performance uh, in the 5-10 at Navin today, that he could put himself in the picture for the bumper today. Um, going forward, um, I was going to do a couple of preview nights. I've only committed to doing one at the moment, and that's in the SM Media. Boys, um, I'm, look, I'm going to do that with Scott and um, Callum. That's on the 8th of March. I'm looking forward to doing that, actually. I think those boys are quite good. And I think, really, as a panter, you should be looking at more than the YouTube panters, the the. Uh, YouTube channels that are out there. The finishing line have just secured Gavin Lynch for their preview night. Josh and Andrew are making brilliant videos at the moment. Um, and, and you just have to look at even the, the up and coming Willow Racing or Racing Willow, um, Horse Racing Buddy. Chelt Mento has been so supportive uh, of myself and Gary um, helping us to get um, the Turning for Home channel ready. And his content is superb, but we have to say a big thank you to him for all his help in getting Turning for Home ready to go for the videos that we hope to make over the next three weeks. But I have to say that no matter how much time I put into these videos and how much homework I put into my own one before I make it, I was stunned to listen to the, the girls on the Understarters Orders podcast who were absolutely superb, the homework, the knowledge they had, they put me to shame to be honest and I don't mind saying that. I hope that I put up good enough selections etc to be watched but like when I saw the amount of work they'd done and the, the show they produced it was uh, quite exceptional, I was really impressed and I would say that you should be watching these types of people rather than listening to Shows like In The Know, although they've got Paul Keeley on, it's a racing post-production, it's sponsored by a bookmaker, and you saw what you're going to learn by the actions of Patrick Mullins last week. You're going to learn nothing, they're going to trot the party line out, and you can, you can copy-paste that for every person out of a stable yard. They will tell you nothing. They're not going to come on that show and give you a 33 to 1 shot from their yard that wins, because... Until later on, they're not going to trot that lines out. And so I would say to any prospective hunter, watch guys who are trying to up and come. Watch guys who are trying to make a name for themselves and they're really looking for the value in the market. Whereas these guys from the yards are just going to trot out the familiar lines, take their fee, and you're going to learn absolutely nothing. So how do you feel? Do you think that we should have... More transparency. Should we have an inquiry into what happened with Benny Did you last week? Do you think the gentleman's game should be running enough that he's run when he beats Statler and um, Fakira? And what would you like to see in the videos where me and Gary are going to do? And is there anybody you would like to see us put on the show with us? We had Charlie and he, he was superb and I, uh, we hope Charlie will be back with us. But is there any other people you can recommend? Is there other people you'd like to see on the show? Anyway, thanks for watching today. It's been a great week. We're nearly there. Three weeks to Cheltenham. And I am starting to get excited, although I'm still taking the... Still trying to recover from Gentleman's Game. But thanks for watching today. Have a great week. Bye for now.